Hi everybody, I'm Jim White. This video is about magnetohydrodynamics, a big word. It's usually abbreviated MHD. And uh, we're going to demonstrate the MHD effect as well as uh, some related electrical phenomena uh, that I think were interesting. Now th this video is more on the demonstration side for uh, a better technical discussion of the things going on. Uh, I'd like you to view the video listed under the Show More tab. It's uh, Magneto Hydrodynamics by Tech Ingredients, and that'll give you a better feel for the demonstrations that I'll be showing you. Uh, it's been said that a picture is worth a thousand words, and I think a demonstration is worth much, much more than that. And a experiment done by yourself is priceless, because you learn a lot in, in trying to reproduce an experiment. So here we go. I hope you enjoy it. Here's our setup for the hanging rod experiment, as you saw in the other video. Two pieces of aluminum tubing hanging here, and they're connected to a terminal block. And we're going to use a D-cell alkaline battery to provide the current. Here's the bottom of our rods. I want to make sure they're not in contact. And here's the wires. Now it turns out the case that it, these alkaline batteries are in is actually steel. So you can use magnets to hold wires in place uh, when you're doing quickie experiments like this. And let's touch to the battery and watch the rods. There you can see how they repel each other with the current from a D-cell battery. As you saw in the other video, uh, there's the right hand roll which is if you put your thumb in the direction of the current, the fingers curl around in the direction of the magnetic field. So in this rod closest to my hand, the field is this way. When the current goes up and comes back down, the field is in the same direction. Now the current's going down the rod. Now to determine the direction of the force on the conductor, there's a left-hand rule, which is the force is in the direction of the thumb when the index finger is pointing in the direction of the field and the second finger is pointing in the direction of the current. Now I can't physically do that, so I made a model. If the red wire is the thumb, the black wire, hope you can see that, would be the direction of the magnetic field. The white wire would be the direction of the current. So we know the field is coming this direction between the two magnets or two conductors and that the current in the this conductor is going in that direction. This indicates, if that was your thumb, that would indicate that the force is in this direction. And of course, for the opposite conductor, the current's going that way. The field is still coming towards the camera, and now the force will be in that direction. 
Okay, now I have a setup to supply AC current from this transformer to the metal rods. And although the field, the current reverses due to the AC, the field then also reverses, so the forces are still in the same direction. And uh, this is about 20 amps. And you can see it actually holds the conductors apart till I release. So we must not have been getting near that current from our batteries. Okay, here we have a, a little test set up. I'm going to change it. These are not very powerful magnets. You can get these for about 25 cents a piece. But even these uh, can show you how a, a linear motor would work. Now I have a power supply here on the left that's putting out 30 volts and this, if I can pick it up, is a piece of pencil lead for this type of pencil. And I'm going to lay it here uh, where the magnet is. By the way, these magnets are polarized this way, not end to end, but across the flat face. So that's why they're sticking together this way. Okay, I'm going to uh, connect the leads to the power supply. this and then just touch this to make sure it makes contact whoops I don't know if you you can see it wants to roll but the surface of the rails here is getting fairly pitted so I'm gonna turn the rails somewhat try and get a new clean surface. This is just a uh, piece of steel as a weight and there's a piece of wood here and that's just to hold these rails down. Now let's see if a new surface will make it work better. Okay. Now let's reverse the magnet, and it should want to go the other way. Okay. Now here I have a stronger magnet, and longer, and again it's polarized this way, not end to end. So. Let's put that between our rails, but unfortunately it's higher than the rails, so let's raise the rails up. And let's see what we get now. Okay, it still wants to go, and it's actually rolling uphill. Now here's a piece of lead from a regular pencil. Whoops. Now down here, there's either no magnetic field or it's the reverse field coming around. But here we have it so it'll go uphill. Now the reason I'm using graphite 
instead of a piece of metal is the metal when it sparks will actually weld itself to the rails so you have to use something that that will not weld itself and I, I think you can see we have a fairly decent amount of magnetic force well it's really the product of the current and the magnetic field to push this thing along and actually make it roll slightly uphill down, down here the fields the other direction there I think you saw it kind of reverse when it hit the other field coming back around the other polarity of the field okay that's a fairly good uh, linear motor DC motor the problem uh, with using metallic rails is that they get pitted and they spark quite a bit and if you roll one piece of metal on another piece they actually weld together uh, due to the severe sparking now we did see that our pencil leads will at least roll along without welding but it did arc and spark and mess up the metal rails to where they were heavily pitted so I got the idea what if I could use uh, not only graphite armature to run along but graphite rails so I found I had uh, in my storage area some carbon rods which are used for gouging and uh, arc welding and I probably bought these in about uh, 1969 or so it was two dollars and seventy cents for ten six inch carbon rods now unfortunately these are copper plated and I've, I found uh, you can get these on the internet still and they're the price is reasonable and uh, you get them from welding supply type places and I'll link uh, or I'll at least show you where to get some and uh, you can get them in 12 inches long if you want to build a longer linear motor but we'll have to take the uh, copper off and uh, I'll show you how to do that next okay here's uh, what we need to remove the carbon plate or the copper plating from the carbon rods and this is normal everyday hydrogen peroxide that you get at the uh, drugstore I think it's three percent yes it's three percent solution and what we need is three parts of that this is a 50 milliliter cup so there's one two three so it's three parts hydrogen peroxide to one part muriatic acid which is really hydrochloric acid a 31 percent solution and uh, I got this at Menards uh, it's normally used for cleaning stonework and concrete and things like that 
and so we only need one part of this. Now I use this concoction to etch printed circuit boards and it uh, is pretty fast and it's fairly tame to work with. Now we'll put the rods in there and we'll come back in a little while and see how things are going. There, I think you can see the solution is turning green and that's uh, indicative of uh, copper ions in solution. So let's let it go. Okay, it's uh, been about 15 minutes now and I think you can see the top has turned black but there's still carb or still copper where the uh, rods were laying on the bottom. So we'll leave this go another 15 minutes. You can't over etch it. The action will stop once all the copper's gone. And uh, so we'll come back and clean everything up in another 15 minutes. Okay, after half an hour of etching, I uh, washed the rods off and dried them with a paper towel. And now we have a set of rails for our experiments. Okay, here is our uh, final assembly of our linear motor using the uh, carbon rods uh, as the rails. And uh, you can see that I've spaced them up on pieces of wood so they're just slightly higher than the magnets. So let's hook this up to the power supply and uh, see what it will do. Okay, let's uh, hook up our leads to the carbon rods. And uh, just set the supply to 10 volts and here's a small piece of carbon rod okay I gotta reverse the polarity here we go uphill well I gotta put something here to stop us from rolling downhill I think we need 
make better contact here. Okay, that rolled uphill. Let's try a piece of the brass rod. All right, I'm up to 25 volts. There we go. Well, that's quite a bit heavier than the carbon rod. But it can still go uphill. And this seems to go much faster. There's a piece of our pencil lead that we used before. And that goes uphill. There's the tiny pencil lead. 0.5 millimeter. And that seems to go as well. Here's a bigger chunk of our pencil lead. Now well, let's see, what do we got to raise this a little higher? Okay, that's a steeper incline. Let's go a little steeper. Now we're still climbing. See, that's higher than those two. It's having a little more trouble, but it's still climbing nicely. Here, I'll go up to 30 volts. And uh, we're really not getting much current because I think the contact is so intermittent. Now there we got a nice spark. seems to jump up to about 8 amps at first and then when the armature is rolling the current comes down. So there we have it. There's a linear rail motor. Okay, I want to show you a, an MHD experiment that you can do at home yourself. Now here's two of the uh, magnets like I used for the rail motor and two of them stuck together just happens to be the same height as these wooden blocks. So I'm going to put that in the middle and here I have a plastic tray that uh, has some water in it uh, and we've added some baking soda or bicarbonate of soda uh, to make it conductive. Don't use salt. Sodium chloride will dissociate into hydrogen and chlorine gas and chlorine gas is not uh, good for you. So we're going to set this above the magnet and right here 
we have two metal plates that are separated with a nylon screw. Now, th th these happen to be uh, stainless steel, but it doesn't matter. It can be any conductive metal. And I'm going to attempt to set this on top of the magnet. Of course, the wires will fight me all the way. There we are. Now I, I'm going to connect this power supply. Well, first I'm going to turn the voltage down. And I'm going to connect the leads to the wires that are going to those metal plates. Okay. Now because our water is a conductor, when we apply the voltage between the metal plates, we should get the MHD action as the current through the water reacts with the magnetic field. So I'm going to turn the voltage up. And let me move this light here. And I think you can see we're, we're generating hydrogen and oxygen and the bubbles are being shot towards us. Now I'm going to reverse the connections to the power supply. And now I think you can see the current in the water is going in the opposite direction. Now if we could do the same thing by flipping the magnets over, uh, but that's a little more difficult. So I'm going to reverse the uh, polarity of the current again. It's a little hard to do things while holding the, the camera. Okay, uh, that's only uh, about 10 volts. Let's crank her up here. And I think you can see it's really gone to town there. Now if I take the voltage down to 9 volts, there's 9 volts. You could do this same thing with a 9 volt battery. And there's the action you get at 9 volts. Now this is drawing almost 2 amperes, so your 9 volt battery isn't going to last very long. But just to satisfy your curiosity, uh, you could do it with a 9 volt battery. This is a uh, disc magnet out of a medical device. You can find a similar magnet uh, in the magnetron from a microwave oven. Or I'll, I, I'll show you where you can purchase one as well. And I've wrapped it in aluminum foil and then uh, held it in place with tape. And we'll put it in this bowl and attach a wire. I'm just going to jam the wire down between the layers of the aluminum foil. And here's a uh, another piece of aluminum foil that's been rolled up so that it'll fit in the center. So next we'll fill the bowl with uh, our baking soda solution to make it conductive and then we'll use the 9 volt battery and the power supply 
to uh, see what happens. I've, uh, I will also put some pepper on the surface so that you can see the motion of the water. Here's a uh, 9 volt battery and I've put some pepper on the surface of the water so that you can see it moving and I'm going to connect the wires to the battery and we see the water between the inner and outer foil is starting to move. Now just to show that it's being caused by this, I'll reverse the leads and it should go in the opposite direction. Let's do it one more time. There it's coming to a stop. And going in the opposite direction. Okay, let's hook it up to the power supply where we can give it some more current. That's uh, 10 volts and the current doesn't even register on the meter. Take her up to 20 volts. And I'm reading less than a tenth of an amp. And let's reverse the voltage. It should go in the opposite direction. Now it likes one direction better than the other because of the bubbles forming on the surface of the aluminum foil. They don't allow as much current in one direction as the other. We're up to 0.2 amps in that direction. We saw some strange effects uh, using uh, aluminum foil. And it turns out aluminum foil reacts with uh, baking soda. And it reacts with most household items that might be used as an electrolyte, such as vinegar or uh, lemon juice, just about anything. Aluminum is highly reactive. So I got some uh, copper wire and wrapped that around my magnet. This magnet is coated with white epoxy because it's out of a piece of medical equipment. At any rate, I wrapped, made a coil of copper and sort of taped it to the magnet and then made another coil of copper to go inside. And uh, let's see if we get any better results with this. Here's some uh, water with baking soda in it. Looks like we need a little bit more. So let's uh, hook our power supply up to this. And turn on some juice. I 
Okay, there's lots of bubbles and things this time, and I think you can see it swirling, but I'll put some pepper on the surface. And let's see if a 9-volt battery can make it go. Yep, it's doing a fine job. Let's try and reverse it now. There we go. And if we go back to the power supply, we can really make it go. Let's reverse the polarity again. Okay, much better results than with the aluminum foil. A good source for copper for uh, any project is in the ground wire section in the electrical area. I'm here at Menards and here's five feet of number eight solid wire for two dollars and sixty seven cents. So there's all kinds of different choices here and uh, I think this is the cheapest source of copper of anything. Well, that's it for uh, this video. I, I hope you got uh, something out of it. If you did, uh, how about clicking thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks.